Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, our show where we have a conversation about um, a role play or nerdy topic. And today I have with me, as usual, Landon. So say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. It's your favorite omniscient voice in the background. Woo! All right, but we also have a guest <laughs> today. Um, we also have a first time guest, Nikki. So, Nikki, say hi. Hello, everyone. Hey! All right, yeah. so this is, this is Nikki's first time on the stream. So, um, so Nikki, before we kind of get started with everything today, if you want to just kind of tell everybody who you are and, um, and how you, you found my stream and my channel and, and all of those wonderful things. Um, all right. Um, I am a role, shit, <laughs> I'm a role player <laughs> and, uh, I found your stream, um, cause I was actually thinking about making my own YouTube channel kind of similar, but not really a how to thing. And I went online looking to see if there was anyone doing that, and then I found you. I actually really liked a lot of what you were doing and this concept of helping new role players. So I joined your server, and I've been standing ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, for you guys that don't know, um, Nikki was my very, very first uh, person that signed up for my Patreon. And I was so shocked that, that it was somebody that I didn't really know and um and really only knew her through like the discord and things like that so it was like a wonderful magical moment <laughs> <laughs> yep <Spoiler> okay <laughs> yes all right oh thank you for the hydrate uh Kay already starting off with that naomi new phone new account oh okay i will have to fix your um fix your vip role then because that means you lost your vip role it's on your other account how All right. Did. So um, while I get the game going, Landon, if you want to um, tell everybody what it is we're going to talk about today. Yes. Well, today we are going to talk about the wonderful uh, tips and tricks on how to make your role play last from a mod's perspective as well as a player's perspective. Yep. yep. Um, I... Go ahead. Oh, and I think today we're going to mostly focus on groups, right? So um, so that's really what we're talking about is, is like uh, joining groups. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I think most of us have our most experience are in, is in group RPs, and so we really want to speak to that. And we will, I think, in future do an episode about how to, uh, or at least do a part of an episode on how to let it last uh, one on one group, uh, one on one RPs. But right now we're going to focus on group RPs and how we can keep all of that going because a lot of the time the goal of an rp is not only to tell a great story but the longevity of a story mm -hmm. none of us really want to put in you know two months of work for an rp to that dies in three months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you don't want you don't want your uh your your planning and setting up process to take longer than the actual yeah. rp which happens <laughs> and, and I, there's also like this idea of of almost bragging rights and i'm not sure that that's the right phrasing but in terms of people are very excited to sit there and be like, oh, well, we have been, had an RP that's ran, that's been running for seven years or two and a half years or six months. Calling me out um, here. And, and there's like this <laughs> measurement. Or what? What was that? So you're it's, calling me out here. It's true, though. I'm amazed at how long you've had your role play running, Nikki. Like, I think that's a point of pride because you put so much yeah, work into no, it. Absolutely. It's so it's proud. Really <laughs> And it means you're doing something right. It means that obviously the group dynamic is good, but it also means that there is like, that is how role players talk to each other. There's a, like, it's a form of measurement. We can't really measure story well, um, especially when it comes to group RPs. So length is a good measurement that everybody understands. And so a lot of the time, the goal is to make something last a long time. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. a lot of times what I see is people measure it more in like the number of members they have and those members aren't necessarily indicative of activity or the story yeah. a lot of time and there's also actually ways that you can pay a certain amount and people will just put a bunch of dead accounts in your server that aren't doing anything it's just a numbers game yeah. i don't necessarily think that that's indicative of success yeah absolutely and i think that we'll dive a little bit into that as we start our topic but first do we want to do favorite thing yes yes i have a very exciting favorite thing for you guys today okay all right then, karen <laughs> tell us your favorite thing okay so um if you you might some of you might have noticed some of you probably not though if you click on the emojis you'll know i don't have any emojis on my server anymore and that is because i added custom emojis i actually paid an artist got real for real 
big girl twitch emojis and if you scroll down to the about you will see a little card that shows all of the emojis that i got and what they're for and that sort of thing so for you guys that are newer to twitch because i know there are some of you that just watch um because you love me and you don't really watch other twitch people so i'm going to take a second to describe it so sorry for you guys that are twitch vets and know how this works but I um, I have two emoji slots for the tier one subscribers. So if you're a tier one subscriber, you're gonna have those two emojis unlocked. I also have a slot for tier two and tier three. I didn't put anything in the tier three slot yet that's open, so I could get another emoji to put there, but I have one in the tier two slot as well. So if you're a tier two subscriber, you can unlock that. I also have two um, bit emotes. So if you donate bits, I think it's at 1K and 5K, then you can get emojis there too. And then there's a 10K emoji slot as well, which I haven't put anything in yet. So I have two open slots. So even if you though don't subscribe or don't donate, you'll see down in your spell reagents and the channel point redeems, there is like an unlock. So you can unlock the emoji and it will be used for that this particular stream. And it'll go away next time, so you'll have to keep doing it if you want to use the emoji. But that's how you can use it for free. And then because I have two slots, I would love to hear from you guys about what other emojis you'd be interested in having on the channel because I can commission some more and uh, and get whatever you guys are looking for added. So uh, so yeah, that's my favorite thing this week is emojis. I'm so excited to have them. Jeez, that's exciting. And they're so cute. <laughs> Thank the you. One is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, love so the raid. I expect all of you to use that when we raid into whoever we end up raiding into at the end of the stream today. <laughs> yeah. So that's Rating? my favorite yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, Landon, what's your favorite thing this week? Um, okay, so I my favorite thing this week is um a metaphorical thing, but it's it's not really. It's it's endings in general. Closed chapters and endings of full cycles. Uh there's been a lot of drama going on in my personal life and personal friend groups. And this week, finally, some negative people have been exercised from the uh, group and have left. And it's so nice to just have, like, a deep, fresh breath of clean air without negative people and negative energy. And that, like, ending feels so nice. It's not, like, this relief feeling. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little bit more elongated and, and complicated than that. But it is this really nice process of just sitting there and being like, oh things are okay again. So oh, that is yes. my favorite thing, those moments, because I think that we have all experienced moments like that where it's either a person or an event or something that comes to an end and it's like, I am stronger for it and I can go forth now and not have this thing I have to carry around. Oh, I love that for you. That's amazing. Thanks. Oh, Brie does it, loves it for me too. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is, that is definitely my fave. Mm -hmm. It's always wonderful when um, when you reach a point where uh, somebody that is not adding to your life is able to exit from your life. <laughs> not that I advocate for cutting off friends or anything, but you know, at some point the relationship cannot be salvaged. So that's always a very uh, nice, nice time when you're able to cut that off and move on. Yes, and it's like one of those things where it's like, all right, there is the door. Mm -hmm. You can leave it. <laughs> wonderful. So, and Nikki, what is your favorite thing for this week? Uh-oh. <laughs> if you didn't prepare one, it's okay. Um, it's just make like... Make it up on the spot. Yeah, make it up on the spot. Something that you like, something that you want to mention um, for today. Well, my dog has been having some health issues lately, and she's finally looking like she's out of the woods, so that's... Yeah, that's an amazing thing. Oh, I love that. That's Molly, right? Yeah. Oh my she's gosh. an older dog, so pretty much everything throws her out. But she's, she's still my little tank. <laughs> yeah, I know how that is. I have an older dog as well. And um, and there, you do start to have like worries at that point. So that's wonderful that Molly's doing well. Oh, actually, no. We're moving into our house at the end of the month. That's a favorite thing. Oh, oh that's another great thing. Oh, sweet, finally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So great. So many great favorite things. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so happy for you. No, that's awesome. I know y'all have been looking for that sort of thing for a minute now. Yeah. 
finally a new house me. is as someone who just got a new house it is nice to like sit there and be like oh thank god <laughs> 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 my own place yep like that was landon's favorite thing not too long ago new it house <laughs> all right shall we dive in yes let's dive in how do we want to get started today all right i think that um when we were talking about all the things that we wanted to discuss for this and where to start we nikki raised a really really great point and that was to be invested in the story that you are making mm -hmm. and i think that, that is the like if i could sum up this entire episode and what we're going to talk about in one phrase that's it like I, you literally could you could stop watching now if you wanted to. Don't be for entertaining as fuck. <laughs> but you could stop watching with that advice of be invested in your story. So I think diving into what that means and what that is would be a really good place to start. Yeah, yeah. Nikki, tell us more about that point because I at hardcore agree with that point as well. Um, and you had a really great perspective on it. So, so tell us more. I guess I, I think that people kind of go into it thinking I put the groundwork in and then it's just there. It's done. And they don't really kind of, I guess it's more realistic to say that you're really never going to finish working on it and tweaking it. And ultimately, if, how do I put this? Um, every time that I've seen like a story fail, it's because the people at the very, very top go inactive. And I have to say that, you know, you can't be forcing people or, or you know, encouraging people or anything to be active in your story if you're not active like how are you going to ask someone else to be passionate about something that you can't be passionate about that's so true and i've seen that before too and i can tell you um of all of the role plays i've run at this point in you know in my i guess you could say role play career uh there's been a number that have failed because of me like literally because of me i lost interest everyone could feel it and it's so hard like when the the head mod like the head admin has lost interest for you to keep interested it's kind of like it's like why like why am i here if the person that made it doesn't even care anymore exactly i think like for me when i join a new server if i see that the the moderator is mentioning how they're already working on something else it's sort of like a, a dead giveaway to me like you're not you've already checked out and this thing is a week old like <gasps> why am i gonna stay <sighs> Can you, can you imagine? Oh, no. Um, just like at a week old, that's, that's a bad sign. If you, if you are, if you're not even finished launching your RP <laughs> before you're thinking about your next RP, it's uh, you need this, to It's almost this mentality life. of like a franchise, you know, where they like start this one thing and then they move on to the next, the next thing. And they're not actually seeing it through. They're just building the, the beginnings parts of it and thinking that that's the whole structure. When it, it, like, yeah, it, it might take two months for you to set up the lore and everything, but that's that's not even half of what you're going to end up doing if your server is going to have, you know, any kind of success, whatever you feel that success is. Yeah, I yeah, totally and we've, agree. We've talked about that. We've talked about that, Karen. You, you were, and I am that kind of person. Of as far as like, you get bored, right? We we will admit that we're not seven year running the same story our peers no i can't do it like i tried to be that kind of our peer at one point in time but like that's just not me <laughs> and, that's, and that's not an issue at all like that's no that's... we found ways around it that we'll talk about yeah and and it doesn't necessarily mean and what kind what kind of nikki said in a second a second ago was uh what you define as successful so for us even though we're not seven year long our peers uh, we do find success in how long we do run our RPs. But there is, I, I do agree with Nikki as far as like, yeah, your job isn't done is on launch day. Nope. Um, you have to continue to be invested, which is why we do things that we have been talking about since this stream started as far as like events and plot drops and all of these things that keep people interested and invested and keep you interested in the story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. Um, <laughs> hey, Nikki, welcome to the stream, by the way. I see that you <laughs> used my new, my new little channel point redeem. Um, <laughs> yeah, I set that up so that it would pop up um, whenever somebody kind of newer to the stream, because uh, you get those automatic pop-ups as you get the channel points, y'all know, you've probably seen them. Um, so yeah, I set I that up that. to pop up. <laughs> I was like, all right, sure, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jane, please, you are not even close to new. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, like I totally agree. And we have a whole episode on uh, on on events and and things like that. So I highly recommend that anybody who's watching this episode and is interested in this topic, if you haven't seen our events episode, you definitely go and watch it um, because that is a huge way that that we keep interested. Like I can say for me in particular, if I'm not regularly working on the lore or or on like the plot overall then i get really bored like yeah. at this point like it's not just about playing a character to me it really is about building the world and that's part of where my joy comes from in in running the role plays so i have found that if i don't have some kind of structure on how exactly i'm running events and when i'm posting them and what they're supposed to be about and da 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 and all that stuff then um then i get bored of the role play and so Wait. to me events are absolutely essential are you telling me that you are a type a personality that needs to continue to have things be interesting in order to in order to continue things i mean maybe yeah i guess wow. that's kind of what i'm saying <laughs> that's <news to> me. <laughs> <laughs> how very even claw of you um, <laughs> no and that i mean that checks out right that you want to continue like there is no overall plot with an RP. Not really. There is no main characters that are keeping you excited and invested. Your characters are supposed to keep you excited and invested. But frankly, if you have boring plots happening, they're not going to. Mm -hmm. So there isn't like this overarching story being told that is at least everyone is on board with that being told. Yep. Oh my gosh, um, thank you for the subscription, Dish Dog. Um, I think the alert sounds are not working, so if y'all didn't get a sound, I'm so sorry. I don't know if it's like, yeah, like I can't hear them or if they just aren't working. So, I mean, I will say that, like, for at least my server, we do have one overarching plot that we've kind of had since the beginning. Um, and then everyone else kind of gets their own approved arcs that just overall weave in. And we find that by weaving those in, everyone's got a reason to stay invested because they're working for something and if they're working for something then it makes them uh have pride in what they're doing so then they're more yes. likely to stay longer um so would you consider that you're in your rp you have like a main character not i think everyone is the main character of their own okay. individual arcs but okay yeah like so that's the overarching I... plot not not quite yeah i, mean, I think a... maybe that's what i was trying to say is that yeah there's there's a plot direction but there isn't like if you're reading a traditional book, there's a main character, there's a protagonist. And yeah. it's your your emotional connection to that protagonist that is getting you through this story. Yeah, I mean, even an ensemble our... story, even an ensemble story, like main characters get their own point of view chapters and things like that, which you just, that just doesn't exist in an RP. Like that no. concept just doesn't exist. I would just describe like, it as something, this... sorry, I, I would describe it as something more like if you saw the, the, the musical Rent, how like everyone you have each individual character and they all have their individual stories, but then they all come together for one overarching thing. Yeah, actually I think yeah. Rent is a great example that's that's kind of close to how you want an RP to be. Um, I love that. Yeah. That's how he does. Yeah, because they all intersect, right? Like all of their stories intersect around um, what's going on in the 80s with the AIDS crisis and things of that nature. And there really is no overall plot to Rent other than just like, AIDS, you know. Um, so, and I don't mean I don't I don't mean to laugh, but I'm sorry. Every time I think about it, I think about the parody inside of uh, the Team America uh, World Police, yeah. and that plays in my head, and I can't stop laughing. Anyways, awesome. <laughs> if y'all haven't seen that movie, then go watch it. It's hilarious. Um, but uh, but yeah, so yeah, I think that is kind of what we're trying to do in an, in a role play. Like we as mods are trying to create what is that backdrop that's going to be like a, a, a motivator for other characters, so that all of the people that are creating characters can figure out you know how their theirs relates to that overall world motivator that's affecting them. Dishdog, I think that you, I sorry, I didn't want to cut that off, but I think Dishdog has an important point. Oh yeah, read it. Um, since we were talking about main characters, I'd say that there are definitely perceived main characters in a role play, regardless of how the server runners want to or not, and it's usually veteran players. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that is important because I want to talk about later out of character uh, behavior and how it connects to like keeping things alive. And, and I think that that like perce perception of veteran players um being the main characters or having main characters kind of ties into that 
Yeah. Uh, but I did want to acknowledge that. Uh, yeah. So that we can come back to it later. I, I think that's true. To... And oh, sorry. One one quick quick point on that. Um, something that we've said before on the show that I, I think is definitely true is that 80% of your activity is going to come from 20% of your players. And that's every RP. There's nothing you can do about it. That's just how that yeah. is. Um, you're yeah. going to get close to that ratio. And those those 20% of players that are being super active, like they're going to be the main characters. And I'm sorry, but if you're not going to be active, you're never going to have a character that's perceived as a main character. You know, But you can still do things so that the people that aren't super active don't feel like the entire story is taken over by those main characters. And that's what I think we're going to get into. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Nikki. So that's kind of somewhat of what I wanted to say, because actually Dish Dog is in my server. Oh. Um, and, and I will say, like, I, I don't know if, it, if he's just talking about his general kind of ideas, but um, I will say that for my server, what I've noticed is that we kind of build the stories more around the active players. So it doesn't necessarily matter who has been in there longer, because it could be someone that's been with us for like the last two years, but they only get to post like once a week. We really can't build a story around them. Whereas yeah. if it's someone who like Dish Dog, like he's very, very active. And like, I, I really appreciate that, Alex. And um, because of that, we can build a lot more around them because we get to know the characters a lot better. And then we can figure out where they would be good, where they could really be like a main staying piece and build around them. Yes, yes. The more active you are, I think the easier it makes the mod's job to figure out like how they can make sure that, that you've got you've got good things going and that you're involved. Yeah. And you do that and the, the only way you do that is by longevity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you can even if you even if you've just joined an RP and you have kept up with activity and you have 10 characters and all this, but you've only been there for a month. Um, I know the math doesn't work out, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> Man, you went, you work fast, whoever this hypothetical yeah, you, person is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just, you still, you still need that longevity piece. It's still about that time and that commitment to become someone who's trustworthy. Uh, to give, to for mods to then sit there and be like, here you want the main villain all right we'll build uh we'll build an arc around your character being the main villain if that's what you want to play um most people who just come in you're not going to just have that Absolutely. so yes there is there is like perks to being a veteran but it i think it's because of that longevity mm -hmm. um more than and that trust that has been built more than necessarily because favoritism which is what a lot of people think of when they when they think of very clicky rps it's that idea of favoritism yeah i do think that a lot of it is like maybe people are very used to that clicky favoritism in other places and then they kind of assume that it's everywhere without giving yeah. anyone a chance and I, if there's one thing i can stress from a player's perspective coming into something is just to be patient and to not make those assumptions that every single server they're going to go through is just out to make them feel miserable like a little pawn in the background I 100% agree with that, and I and I don't want to cut this conversation off because I think that this is an important conversation. But I, I, I we are going to focus heavily on out of character stuff in the second half of the stream. So can yep. we loop back yep. to in character and what we can do in character in order to secure longevity? Because then we'll talk more and expand more on these ideas later. So you did yeah. mention um, the events, plot drops, and and things like that. Um, yeah. Did, can we circle back to that? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Let's go to that. Now, we had a whole episode on events, so I don't really want to spend much time on, like, how to create events and things like that. Um, yes. But from a player's perspective, you know, when, when the mods are dropping, you know, events and plot drops and things like that, um, what should you do? I think that's a good question that we can answer. I mean, I would stress just activity. Um, I know that for my server, we use events to give points that players can, can then turn into dice which then make their character stronger over time to show because you know it's a school mm -hmm. um and i think that you know the main thing that we're like awarding points on is going to be activity and the ability to push plot and if it's a newer character then the best thing that they can possibly do is just show us how they perform under pressure because that is something that we can build a story around as well oh i love that so it sounds like what you, a lot of what you're saying is not only get involved, but w being willing to have your character involved in conflict, which some yes. role players will not do, as I'm sure that you have found, and we have definitely found too. Like for some, that's not what's fun for them. They're not here for that. They're gonna do fluff, fluff, fluff 24 seven. And I agree from a mod's perspective, a player like that is it, like they're welcome and that's fine, but 
it's very, very hard then to do arcs that are that are involving their character if all they're going to do is fluff. You know, if they yeah. refuse to do anything um, that that breeds conflict. Very much it's, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that there, a level of conflict kind of proves to a level of investment mm -hmm. um, in a weird way that I'm not really sure how they're connected, but they are. But they are. I feel like they if are. You're, if, it's, if you're fluff, you're on the surface level. Like, it's the same thing as far as, like, a friendship. If you are just here on the surface, you are here on the surface. But when going gets yeah, tough, when existence tough is going, has if you're still there, mm -hmm. then, like, if you're still willing to fight for this friendship or you're still willing to acknowledge conflict or anything like that, then there's a deeper level there. Yeah. And the same goes with our players. If the players are willing their characters to get deep, dark and deep and dirty, and I'm not even talking, like, it has to be super angsty, but it has to be some level of conflict. We know that you're willing to be invested in the story. We know that you're putting your time and energy into it rather than just staying on the surface. I mean, yes. if you look at this personal growth in general, like just the human existence, most of our personal growth comes from conflict. So that kind of translates into our characters as well. Like uh, they need to have some sort of an obstacle that they have to overcome in order to progress, in order to mature. Otherwise, like, what story are you actually telling? Like, yes. or are you telling a story or are you just sitting there existing? Yeah. And that's, and that's the whole point is that you, in order to remain emotionally invested, you need to tell a story yeah. and you need to have growth. You need to have depth. You need to have overcome obstacles. You need to do all those things that traditional literature tells us that are involved in stories and books and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, that still exists within RP, and you still need that in order to be invested. And if you have that, then you're going to have a longer story. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it just is how it is. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have that, on the very nature of your writing all of this stuff, it's going to take you longer to write it, which means that it's just going to prolong how long the story is. Mm -hmm. Fluff, fluffy pieces that people are just loving all over each other can can take a day if you're writing a really yep. deep emotional thing that could take a week and in order to like have that extended time means that you are then elongating how long the rp lasts absolutely yep for, for sure i mean it kind of to bring it back to real life it, like it's almost like do you really know if you're friends with someone if they've never pissed you off or annoyed you ever like i'm not sure you know i'm not sure you do know you yeah. know or if or if your friendship is just very surface level like you know because I quite I definitely question that like if someone's never gotten on my nerves and and I've sh and I've proven that I can still tolerate them beyond that it's almost like you know are we really friends I'm not sure same thing with romances like if yeah. you've never seen how your spouse is when they're really pissed off then I wouldn't marry them like you don't want to sign your life away to that yeah you don't know because what if they're awful when they're pissed off and you can't handle it and then you, it's too late oh you're married now and now it's like really messy to break up you know <laughs> You yeah, it's those, it's those tests to relationships, and and like Karen says, dating and RP is so similar in certain ways because it's that it's about that emotional connection. It's about finding those partners that will dig in deep for you, yeah. and um, if you're willing to let your characters do that too, it shows that level of vulnerability of hey, I'm here for the long run, mm -hmm. instead of hey, I'm using you to for another purpose. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yes, one hundred percent. Um, yeah. And I think that... I like Alex's I, quote. Sorry. Oh, the, it's a Tyler Durden quote? Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. you need to get into a fist fight, but <laughs> an argument it's probably. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the other thing with that is that, as we kind of said before, but I will loop back to it, is that it is the mod's responsibility to show this. Yes. Um, if you are not willing to do, and we've said this time and time again, if you are not willing to do the example, you cannot expect it of your RPers. Mm -hmm. If you are not willing to risk loss for your character, if you're not willing to lose the fight, if you're not willing to RP every day or cape on activity or anything like that, then the people who are supposed to follow you aren't going to either. Yep. I would really um, argue that, like, whatever standards you have for the rest of your server, you have to be like the epitome of that. You have to hold yourself just a little bit higher because otherwise they're not going to follow you. Like that's yep. kind of a shit leader. If you're telling them to do as I say, not as I do. Yep. Absolutely. Which is why it's that idea of, Oh, I am bored of the story. Therefore it's downhill from here. Yep. I, you can't expect people to be more invested than you in your story. 
and they're not going to be, they're never going to be. So like yeah. you have, you have to follow your own activity rules, right? Like that's, I think that's essentially the point there. Like if you expect people to be posting once, once a week and you're constantly on activity check because you're not posting once a week or even worse, you're on activity check, but you're not activity checking yourself. Like WTF, don't do that. Um, yeah. then yeah, nobody's going to be active in your role play. Like it's just not going to happen. So whatever your expectation is, you have to meet that expectation consistently mm -hmm. over a long period of time. Yes. And it's that uh, it's, it can be exhausting. <laughs> it can mm -hmm. be, but if you're not in for it, then you either a need a really great mod team or you shouldn't be modding your RP. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that's, if you're not willing to hold yourself accountable, then you, as much as you might love the story or think that the RP is going to be great, that's the number one thing you need to be doing. Yep. But then I also think that there is something like, like obviously we talk a lot, or you've talked a lot about like balances and things and how players, like I think that again, players with patience and, and stuff like, because I remember early on when I launched, I had a, a terrible death in the family and I was still mm. expected to be online working mm -hmm. and generating content. And when I disappeared for like two days, I got a lot of shit for it. So like, oh. like I understand, like, you know, I, I want to be active and running this thing. But at the same time, I think that a lot of times players forget that admins are humans as well. That's true. Absolutely. It's a tiny bit of patience. And that's, those are times where your mod team, I feel like should be taking over and like helping you with, <laughs> oh, oh shit. <laughs> well, that's maybe a learned lesson right or or Absolutely. for advice that maybe you didn't learn or you don't need but for us to give to other people to sit there and be like in those times that is why you have a mod team yeah um to remind the admin that it's okay to be human and also why it's okay for a mod team to not actually be the most perfect i've been on activity check i'm a mod it has happened <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes you just because... have sometimes you just have bad weeks, and it's just yeah. it is what it is. You're human. You're and a human that being, just... and that's okay. So yes, yes, you are the epitome, and you're supposed to hit up to the standards. But if you have a whole team that you're holding to the standards, and the whole team is on average doing everything, then you're okay. You don't mm -hmm. have to be perfect in that way. If you have the whole team on your side, for the most part, living up to expectations. Exactly. Which is why I'm sitting here and being like, get a mod team. It could be two people. It could be three people, but get a mod yeah. team. <laughs> yeah. Don't try to do it by yourself. You are like, Absolutely. you are like set. I feel like you're setting yourself up for failure if you try to do it by yourself. You know? Burnout. Also, 100%. Burnout. That would make you crazy. Also mm -hmm. burnout. Like yep. that's yeah. the other thing too, is that not only do you get bored of stories, you get burned out of stories. Yep. What I found was that it kind of like, I was running around so much and I was so ragged that I was just snapping at people. So there was like that first couple of months we almost didn't survive because I was just so angry all the time. I'm just like, Argh! fly straight, damn you. And <laughs> yeah, like I, I need my team and my, like without them, uh, we would not be here. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, I can't be on 24 seven. Sometimes things happen and it's just not, it's not realistic, you know, especially now I have other things going on. I have the YouTube channel in the stream and I want to dedicate time to that. So if I didn't have, you know, my mod team, like, I just wouldn't be running role plays anymore. Like that's the truth of it. I, I wouldn't be, you know, if it was by myself, I would have just stopped, you know? Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's a, good <laughs> it's a good reminder that you are, you are human and your mod team will allow you to be human. Yeah. And yeah. To, and if it's, oh, sorry, go ahead. It, oh, and I was going to say, and if you give responsibility to other people, a, it lets them be invested. Like that's the other thing too, is that, mm -hmm. If you see more than one person being invested in a story, your players are going to be more likely to be invested. Yep. If it was just one person being like, oh my gosh, I love this story. I made it from scratch and all of this. People would be like, that's cool. And they might like it. But if you have an entire mod team that's like, no, we're really proud of this, the world that we built. That's more people for people to connect to. More people mm -hmm. for people to be like, oh, they think it's cool. So maybe I should think it's cool. Yeah. Um, or it's okay that I think it's cool kind of thing. Yep. It's kind of kind of like how if you if you go to a restaurant and like the parking lot's empty, you know, and it's your first time at that restaurant, you're a little bit like, what's going on here? You know, so it's the same thing. Like when you enter a role play, if you only see like the admin active and like nobody else, it's kind of like, mm, what's up? Uh, this is weird. 
<laughs> I will say though that like exclusively admin activity is pretty much the only reason we survived our first summer. You know, summer slump, it's a thing. But we'll talk mm -hmm. about that later. <laughs> yeah, I mean and I that could be that that could be a nice transition because I feel like if you guys have any other things to say about in character other than encouraging people to be invested and to to keep mixing things up with by yeah. doing Ops, events, stuff like that. I have one other thing. I think as an admin, it is your responsibility. Like if you were the if you were the admin, not mo not even mods, okay. But if you were the admin, like if this is your baby, if this is your role play, it is your responsibility to role play with everyone that joins that wants to role play with you. Now it doesn't mean role play with everyone. Not everyone's going to hit you up for role play. But if someone asks you, like even if you don't like the plot that they're proposing, or you think they're kind of annoying, or like whatever the case, like if you are the admin. Sorry, you have to role play with them. And I don't I think it's I think it's not right when admins try to be picky and choosy about who they role play with because it's like you're not taking that responsibility of running the role play if you're going to be choosy in the same way that a player might. How is that say, building a community? Like it's not. If you sit there and go, actually I don't like you and I don't want to role play with you, you've just ostracized the player. Yeah, and it's like it's so silly. Like Okay, the one time that I've struggled with this, it was, you know, if we circle back to the people that only want to play fluff, mm. because all of my characters are, like, deep into their own arcs. So if there's, like, one person that's just like, I just want our characters to interact so they can meet each other. And, and I'm like, okay, this feels like a, a bit like a waste of time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But it's not. Like, you have to it's look not, at it from yeah. the mod perspective of you are making a connection and you are getting someone involved and into your or roleplay. And that is part of your job. I absolutely am on the same page as you, Nikki. I love to be on that like deeper level. I want more, like I don't like personal fluff conversations in real life. Why would I want that in my <laughs> Landon, <laughs> like, I do I not, I do not want to meet you. Person. Landon's like, I do, I wouldn't know. I would not like to meet you and talk about the weather. Thank you very much. I, <laughs> I don't like to do that in, uh, I don't like to do that in, at coffee shops. I don't like to do that online. However, That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying that I refuse to write with everyone in my server because obviously, if they're in my server, it's because I like them. Like, I well, yeah, you I, approve I them at the end of the day, right? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's more just like I wish that some players would just kind of take that initiative as well, so that it's not all on me to carry our scenes. Because like mm -hmm. sometimes that is just so draining. It yep. is absolutely, but that's you know that I, yeah, I it is the nature of the as game. far as as far as being like it is your responsibility to make sure that you're players as a mod it, feel inclusive yep. and feel yep. inviting and feel like at any point in time they could write with you mm -hmm. i do think that after that initial initial like hello how are you you can start demanding a little bit more from your players yeah you and that doesn't yeah. necessarily our mean that our characters are going to be best friends our characters yep. might still have conflict but that doesn't mean that i'm going to stop writing with them yeah because that yeah. conflict is good yeah and and, and i think and I think them getting involved with like with the mod is also helpful for them to feel comfortable writing with other people. So Absolutely. I typically find that I don't have to keep writing with somebody that I don't like. Like people are very perceptive. They figure out that we're not we're not good partners very quickly after the one thread, right? And they don't hit me up again. <laughs> but they'll they'll typically go find other people in the role play that they like, you know, and then write with them and then and then they're good and happy and I don't have to worry about them anymore. And there's also that potential that they like might have had a bad enough interaction like in character with your character where they can go gossip to somebody else and sure. then that's like another arc in the story. Oh my uh, god, not Jim and uh, not Jim and uh, Jim and was it Rhea that yeah. ended up one Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, was it Ashton or Rhea? Which one? Did no, no, it was Rhea. It was Rhea. You're right. <laughs> Where that was, was like, so oh, funny. They're, gonna be, they're gonna be great friends, it's gonna be super fluffy, and then they just started a fight. It was uh, like, it's nope. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that um I think that also what this goes to show too is that a healthy role play has different levels to it. It has those pe it has those people who will be on the surface and will kind of be the cream that rises to the top as far as like, oh, we're okay with being up here, and then you have the dregs of coffee underneath it with the dark <laughs> deep players mm. they're like no all i want is like eggs um <laughs> and a healthy rt has those different levels of people who naturally find what they're looking for um and so that once you've had that mixture and interaction you can go your separate ways yep yep you have to have room for you have to have room for all of that stuff because of the 80 20 rule i feel like yes 
Yeah. Okay, we can move on now. That was just, that was a point that I wanted to make that I think is really helpful for admins to understand. Like, when I, when we say, like, it is your responsibility to keep it going, like, I mean, even on the nitty gritty level of role playing with individual people. Yeah. And I think that actually fits us into a really good transition because that was, like, it's that in character, but it's also, you're doing that in character stuff for the out of character community. Yeah. And yeah. that's the other thing too, is that yes, you could have the most amazing story and the most amazing writers and so some fantastic prose and some fantastic plots going on. And if you do not have an out of community, out of character community that is talking to each other and invested in each other, your role play is going to die. I think yep. so too. Like I, I see role plays. My... Yeah, I, I see role plays try to not have so much out of character. Like they'll they'll like control like how you can plot with people. They'll control how and when you can chat with people. And I just I've never seen it work. Like if you have no no venue to make friends with the people you're role playing with, like the role play falls apart every single time. Yeah. I, like I think that whenever there's like downtimes in in my server. The thing that will probably stress me out the most is when the OC chat is dead. Because, like, from that is where, like, all of the other interactions spark, really. But, like, mm -hmm. if that's dead, then I, I feel like nobody's really interacting, nobody's really making out-of-character friends, and then they're not going to be comfortable enough to write with people. Especially when you factor in, like, just the, the mental health thing, and I feel like I can just go on a soapbox about that. I won't. I can. <laughs> Regarding mental health and role play and how people just get in their own heads, that that OC community is so important. Absolutely, and I think yeah. you're right. Like once once the out of character communication stops, that's like that's like the beginning of the end every time. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's this. Uh... We love this hobby because we love to write stories and we love characters, right? Most of the time. But it's also a hobby and we're hoping to connect with people. Yep. If you, in a group RP, don't provide a place and community for people to connect with each other, then there's no in invested interest. Yep. Right? If I don't have somewhere to go, if I'm having a bad day, um, mm -hmm. wh why am I there? So all of a sudden I don't have somewhere to go to sit there and be like, hey, work was shit today and I'm not feeling up to writing. I just don't write. And then all of a sudden my partners might either move on or think that I dropped them or who knows. Um, but without that willingness to actually like be like, Hey, out of character, I'm not good right now. Mm -hmm. you, I actually you miss out on that human piece of everything. I actually had someone kind of recently that has been kind of hopping in and out of the server a bit. And I finally like reached out to them and they told me this actually very heartbreaking story about how they've basically been in other stories before that tell you you're not allowed to talk about what's bothering you. And I do understand that to some degree you don't want to have the out of character chat being a therapy session because that's obviously going to potentially trigger other people or just bring everyone down. But I do think it's also important to have a place where you can say like, yeah, work was shit today or I got in a fight or I stepped in poo. Like you want to be able to be a human around other humans and mm -hmm. like, we're like little sims we need our, our social bar filled that's right yeah, I, I think that there's an important difference and distinction to make we, we've all been at least for me i like to refer to it as uh the the psychology 101 class mm -hmm. where um from my experience that we, i was sitting in psychology 101 and there was that girl in the front who thought it was actually therapy oh, God. Um, <laughs> and then it's just like I understand that your dad left at a young age but I'm trying to learn about you know mental illness or something like that yeah. um, <laughs> and it's that that awkwardness there is a difference between that and going to a place where you're a friend and you're asking advice for friends which is also like why we in our RPs at least have salt chats yeah where you can talk about the more nitty-gritty of hey this is what's going on in my life and this really fucking sucks and you can choose to either mute that chat, engage in that chat, or not engage in that chat. But it also doesn't stop the talk and the community building that's happening in the out-of-character chat. Yep. So I've got a few things on that that I definitely want to say. So in the cafe, you guys will notice there is no salt chat. There is no vent chat. There's nothing like that. But, the, but you will see it in my role play. So what's the difference there? The difference is that with a role play, you have to apply to get in. It's not just anybody. 
So, you know, if somebody really is having trouble, they've been vetted to some degree before they've joined the role play. I'm not somebody out here that's trying to have a 200 plus person role play, right? Like that's not, that's not what I'm here for. So I feel like when we're talking about role play groups, it's quite different than running like a large community server because there is a barrier to entry, which is getting your character approved, right? So for, for servers that have barriers to entry, I think it is really important that you give a place for people to complain, um, like the salt chat, so so that they, they have that spot and they have that community. It's kind of like, okay, when I think about building a community of friends, I think about it in the same way of like, why do people go to church? I don't think people go to church because of faith, okay, they will tell you they do, but that is not that does not match my experience, okay, and I don't think that's what I've actually observed when I've been a churchgoer, okay. They go to church for community because it's a place where people actually care about each other and have activities together and do things, you know, that, that build those social bonds that are so important to, to our mental health and to our humanity. And so I think when it comes to a role play, you're building a community in, in more of that sense. Like you're not trying to have the biggest community. You're trying to have a community of people that trust and care about each other because that's what's going to lead to good writing. So, so that's why, why it's so important in a role play, why you'll see me do it in, the, in there. And then you'll see me rail against the idea of event uh, in like my big Discord server that's for my channel because in that server, we're not building a community where we vet each person that comes in. Anyone can walk in at any point, right? It doesn't matter. So it's just, it's different. It's a different type of community. Absolutely. Yeah. We used to um, have a salt chat though. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> we did, and it didn't work. I tried, it didn't work. Which is and why it, it, we don't anymore. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work because, you know, it's just, it's not that kind of server where I'm vetting each person. It's just, it's randoms off the street, which is fine. You know, the server exists for other purposes, um, but a role play is not like that. You're going to be vetting each person that comes in. So that means you should have space for complaints. And for me, like personally, and I understand that this is a personal thing, I form attachments by vulnerability. Yes. When you show, when you show you're vulnerable, when you come to me when you're upset or come to me when you're happy or anything that, that makes you emotionally vulnerable, I connect with you because I feel that trust. I feel that you're willing to invest in me and so I can invest in you and trust you with my vulnerability. And that's mm -hmm. how I build friendships. So being able to have that in an RP online setting is really, really important um, mm -hmm. because then it also shows that I can be vulnerable with my characters, that I can do more outrageous plots, that I can do things that are a little bit more on the like iffy side that some people might not be okay with, that some people might be okay with. If I have that trust that I have built as a friendship, um, or at least a trusting relationship out of character with, I can feel safer doing in character things. Absolutely. Even that actually, the... oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay, um, I was gonna say, like, th I think the pivotal, like, thing that changed kind of the entire story for me, for like my, for my main server, it was like, when I started being open to being vulnerable with other writers, because um, for a while, I, I think I was sort of trained by like the old school AOL community that was very much like, if I'm the owner, then I am infallible. And this is a dictatorship. And if you don't like it, you need to leave. This is and, not a democracy. This is a cheerocracy. <laughs> your cater towards the pain of my eye. Yeah, okay. So, um, so it was like this, there was this one day, yeah, throwback. Um, it was this like one day where I had a player that I could see the potential in him but he was just not quite getting a lot of things. And we have like some things that are like sort of hidden lore where it's going to be coming out later in the saga and we don't want to like do too many spoilers. But I could tell that he was having a lot of trouble with that. So I sat him down and like just kind of human to human had this interaction. And I was able to level with him to get him to understand where I was coming from and what my vision for the story was and why all of these restrictions in the lore were in place. And once he got there, then he actually became one of my moderators for a really, really long time. He had to leave because of like, school and things, but like he actually became like a really important part of my team. And that lesson taught me to just apply that to everyone. So every single player that comes in, if they are open to communication, obviously this only happens if they are open. 
but if they are then i can have that conversation and you know really level with them and then also show them the hidden things that they can potentially do in play where they can't have it right now but if they can you know work for it and it is a possibility where they can let their creativity fly and it doesn't necessarily impede on the lore and they're working towards it so then they take pride and again it all just kind of circles back to the longevity of the story oh i love that I feel like we kind of do that too a little bit like this most recent event um we were doing we're going to an alien planet right we're doing excursions to an alien planet um and uh and and i was like you know we have two people brie and thumper who are who are playing characters that are really invested in uh in aliens like that's what their characters are all about right so i reached out to thumper and i was like thumper this is we're gonna do an alien excursion for the next event um you tell me what aliens you want and uh and thumper uh, took it and, and just absolutely freaking ran with it. Um, they went to, to Brie, who was playing the other character, and they developed this whole thing. And they literally, like, wrote the event for me, which I was not expecting, but I was so so pleasantly happy. It's like, oh, shoot, well, I just need to add in a couple things, and here we go. Event done. <laughs> but you see, that's an example of letting your players get invested in it. Like, you opened up the opportunity to let your players be a part of the story mm -hmm. that got them invested, that makes them want to stick around. Yeah. Because they're part of the world building. They're part of the investment in this. They're important to this this thing, too. It's not just Karen's story. It's not just Karen and the mod's story. It's their story. Yep. Yeah. Um, because they helped create it. And I think that that is also a really important tool when building your community is sitting there and, and doing quote-unquote outreach, asking mm -hmm. people to help out. Uh, getting them invested right off from the start. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for the lurk, Moisty. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that that's what it what it means to like out of character get people involved. Is it's really about making sure that they understand that there is an opportunity for them to feel comfortable and safe, even if they haven't in the past in other role mm -hmm. plays. You know, mm -hmm. welcome to the stream, King. So happy to have you here. Um, but I think. I think yeah, I think it's a lot it's a lot about that. It's a lot about making sure that that they feel they feel safe. You know, and I feel like we kind of touched on this uh, last week when we talked about sexism a little bit. And uh, and and it's it's so important because once somebody feels safe, then all of a sudden they can actually be creative. You know, because they're not thinking about things like, "Oh, well, what if I write this dark plot and everyone's going to think this that and the other about me?" Or like, what if I, what if I try to do this thing and it's unpopular? Or what if nobody likes this crazy character concept that I have? Or like, what if they think my character's a Mary Sue? Or da 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 da. Like, I mean, I could go on and on about that. But if they feel safe, yeah. they're not going to be having those types of thoughts and concerns. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I also really quickly because we talked about salt chat and being emotionally vulnerable. I very quickly also wanted to bring in a place that. You want to make your community be a fun place too. Yes. Uh, we are very fortunate because we have two wonderful memers and more uh, <laughs> with, with Kendra and her romance novels. But we have, but traditionally in our RP, we have Thumper and Zine who like to just make memes. You like they'll make of, them of the RP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And meme the RP and um, shit posting and just kind of things like that we invite that into our server because that's another example of people being emotionally invested mm -hmm. of being interested in what's happening not only are they interested in what's happening with their story arcs they're interested enough in what's happening in other people's story arcs and then they're willing to make art about it like it's it's this really cool thing and we encourage it um with a little bit of like positive attention so it's a little pavlonian but also because it's just awesome <laughs> yeah i mean i think it's genuine right like we're not doing yeah. that just just you know because we want to foster that i mean we are oh, but also because i freaking love it <laughs> no it's fantastic please continue to make memes i love the memes yeah um, i'm sad because there's been a there's been a little less memes this round go but i also understand thumper and zine are both very busy people yeah, um, Th Thumper's got a, a very long hours um, job right now, and Zine's going through some stuff. So unfortunately, the, there have been a few less memes, but we still have but, um, we still have memes from Kendra and oh, and, and what name? I was saying? literally just mood boards, say that too. <laughs> mood boards, mood yes. boards, Pinterest, all of these things too that are being created. These art that is that is happening and existing, I think, is really really important um, part of the community too. And, and something that I think is very special to our RP. I don't know how many other groups have stuff like that going on. I hope a lot because I hope there's a lot of mod teams out there that are thrilled 
that the communities that they have built are so invested. But I do encourage making space for that and encouraging behavior like that because it really does bring it alive and people get so excited. Mm -hmm. And I think even if you're not artsy, like you can still participate in this stuff too oh, by um, by just talking about other people and, and their, their stories. I think it's important as a player to be spending some time reading other people's role plays that you're not participating in that might not, not directly affect your character. And then if you see something that someone else is writing that you think is cool or heartwarming or scary or shocking, like, yeah, tell them, celebrate it. Cause you know, a as role players, we want that clearly. If we, if we were happy to not get any feedback, then um, we would likely be writing solo stories and fan fiction a lot more, but we're role playing because there's instant gratification and we love that. <laughs> so I think give people that instant gratification. And again, it circles back to mods that this is the behavior you wanna see, this is the behavior you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, but it is really cool. Like for us, emojis, we talked about this for the last couple of streams, uh, streams, but emojis are a big thing that's been happening in our server that people have been emojiing replies that they love that are not their replies. Mm -hmm. um, and it shows, it is that instant gratification, but it also shows that people are interested and it's been a topic of discussion. Yeah. Um, people drop the funniest emojis sometimes. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so, um, it's so cool. And it's, it's just really nice to see that people are listening and reading and engaging. And that's part of, that's part of how you should be running it and running that community and, and, and making a place where it's safe to not only bring up your characters, but to bring up other people's characters to show that you're invested in their story and their time as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really critical. I think that's like, that's like so critical. And apparently I've, I've, I've heard from some of, from some of my players that that's not a thing that happens in other role plays. Like people will just talk about their own character, but they won't talk about each other's characters. And, um, and so hopefully, you know, if you're running a role play like that, like you can fix it, you can fix it very easily just by you talking about other people's characters. And I like people are so monkey see monkey do like I promise if you do it, they'll start doing it too. Right. Yeah. And then you'll have this community that is reading these other stories and is invested in everyone's characters instead of just their own. And then you get a whole lot less. Um, bonus, you get a whole lot less of people trying to like force their character into being a main character and competing with each other because they actually care about the other characters that are not theirs. And it, whereas if you don't have that, people of course care the most about their character, right? And yep. then they're like, whatever, you know, I don't care if your story works out or, or how it resolves because it's not mine. Um, but it doesn't that, have to be that way. But also that competition that you just referenced is a great segue for the topic of like keeping drama out of the like keeping the OC <laughs> drama out it's like it kind of um it, it's a bit like uh what's what's that movie um the crucible you know where like it these girls were like accusing other people of um being witches predominantly because they wanted their husbands and that kind of happens a lot in rp not necessarily oh. women but it's just sort of like <laughs> they right. threw these oc dramas specifically so that they can edge someone out and then have their romantic ship. And that's probably the biggest thing I'd see. Okay, so I, I, just as a joke, the English in me, major in me is, is very, uh, is, just needs to point this out. Did you say movie, The Crucible? Right, yes, I didn't see, or didn't watch the book, re read the book. <laughs> okay, no, it's a play. It's a, it's I saw a the play, play, and then... <laughs> so I was just like, um... <laughs> Okay, no, that I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to call you out. The English major in me was just like, we need to talk about this for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> school, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, absolutely. I think that that's part of it, and I and that's going to be one of our other topics too. Is um, drama will kill your RP faster than water kills fire. It's like, true. It will. It will put it out fast if people start fighting in the out of character chat and mods don't take care of it where mods are like blatantly biased, mm -hmm. people will not stay. No, because they're gonna, gonna, they're gonna think it's me next. Even if they're not involved, they're gonna look at that and they're gonna be like, oh shit, when's my turn to be on the chopping block? You know? Especially if it is a consistent trend. Yes. Like if you have that one problematic person in an RP who mods then like either side with or whatever, it will, it will, it's hard to get rid of. Yes. Uh, and it will be get people sit there and be like, okay, when is it going to be me? Um, like, you got to handle that shit and you need to not handle it in public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Biggest yeah. advice because that drama will kill it. Yep. The thing that, like, 
we've been struggling kind of with is that like we've had some players that vent to the staff because of course we want to be like inclusive we want people to think that we're their friends which know that we're their friends not just think it um but then they come to us and they kind of vent about somebody else and they don't quite realize that as moderators we have to take that seriously and we have to approach it like well this sounds like it's harassment do you want to make a formal complaint and they're like no i just wanted to vent it's like well then you're essentially gagging us like if you have a problem with a player, please let us know so we can handle it. But if you're not willing to come forward and say, like, this is an actual problem and I need staff intervention, then I feel like we kind of can't really do anything because if we try, then it's very clearly like this person has been talking shit. Mm -hmm. And that's only going to make more drama, whereas it might just be one person letting their anxiety get the better of them. So I feel yeah. like I want, I wish that players would be like a little bit more mindful with like, of course we want them to feel comfortable with talking to us, but just be very mindful with how they approach this particular thing, especially if they're talking about another player. I think if they want to vent, they should probably not be taking that to a mod, right? Like if all you want to do is vent, you should be taking that to your, your friend in the role play that's going to fully understand that, you know? Um, or they should be starting the conversation with, I need to vent for a second, is that okay? You know, or something yeah. like that. Because I, I've been put in that situation before as well, where it's kind of like, they, they're talking to me about something and it seems very serious and it's like, oh my gosh, what what's going on? Can you send me screenshots of that DM um, exactly. or whatever? Or what thread are you talking about so I can go read it? Um, or da 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 like whatever the situation. And then it turns out they don't want me to do anything and it's like, um, but you brought this to my attention and what if I agree it's serious too and I do think we should do something about it, you know? Yeah. And then you're telling me I can't go talk to the other person. It's kind of like, eh. <laughs> that is a little bit awkward. Um, now, there's definitely been situations where I've started that conversation, though, where I've been like, hey, I'm seeing this, is this, is this, you know, is this a problem for you, or have you got it handled? And then I think a player saying, well, no, don't talk to them yet, I'm, I'm handling it, then that's fine, if I brought it up. But if they brought it up, it's a little bit, it is a little bit awkward to get told, I don't want you to handle this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know, I feel... I assume this is like the same way for you guys, like where you kind of get to a point where you're very protective of your players and like you understand they all have something going on in their life and you don't want any of them to be feeling uncomfortable or otherwise unsafe. So then if you find out that someone is potentially threatening that, you want to take action and then to be told you can't, it's just... It's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't necessarily feel like it's my job to keep my players comfortable, so I don't really care about that, but I do <laughs> care if they feel unsafe. Like if they feel unsafe to where they or they feel like they cannot engage with the role play any longer, then I do want to like fix that. Like, cause that's my job. You know, I do feel like that's my job as the admin to make a space where they can continue to engage with the role play and they feel safe. I just realized that I have been I have been on mute. Um, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, go go ahead, Lynn. I thought you were just being quiet and letting me no. and Nikki have a back and forth on this one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to compare. I'm like, it's like going to your boss. And uh, going to your boss and complaining about your coworker, and then you're yeah. like, what is your boss supposed to do about that? Like, especially um, if, if your then... boss, especially if your boss is like their boss too, and you're bitching to your boss yeah. about it, like that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bree. I find myself entertaining too. Yeah, no. And I was like, this is a really good point. Why aren't they listening to me? Oh, it's <laughs> an idiot, and I muted myself. Wow. Got it. <laughs> anyway, that was my really important point. Yeah, um, no, I yeah. totally agree. It's exactly like that. It's about like, okay, it's you and your coworker and you both report to the same boss and you go to that boss and you bitch about that coworker. Like, don't do that. You put your boss in such an awkward situation. Find another coworker to vent to if you don't actually want this this boss to take action. Especially because the boss has really to stay bad too. impartial. It also yeah. makes you look really bad too. Like, that's mm -hmm. the other thing too is that all of a sudden, oh, you don't want me to do anything about this, so you literally don't think it's a big deal, but you're coming to me and giving this to me, and now I have an opinion about you that I didn't have before. Yep. And I think that you're a gossip and a boy who cries wolf. That's exactly. what's happening now. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> and I will say that the levels of, of how acceptable I find this and what and what annoys me most definitely change based on how mm -hmm. long you've been in the role play and how much um, and how and how much you've been active and, and how much I know you. Um, like the longer you've been in the role play and the more active you've been and the more that I know you, the more tolerant I am of that kind of stuff. But like newer players, 
newer players, like, please just don't, just don't even open those floodgates. Like, please, it's so awkward. <laughs> I have to say the amount of time that you spend in the role play um, makes it a little bit more complicated because mm -hmm. the, the longer that you're in the role play, the more the lines of friend and mod really do blur. Hey, it's Nikki yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the more it's like, oh, at, there was a one point where um there was an RP and you know, Kendra wasn't a mod or Naomi wasn't a mod in some of our original RPs and it was like, mm -hmm. oh, those lines get really blurry because they are your friends. Mm -hmm. Um when it's someone who literally just joins and is like, I want to tell you about this thing. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, I, and I also wanted to comment on on Karen, you saying that it goes the other way, that, that there are times that we will approach players and be like, yeah. hey, this thing is, like, we can tell when there's drama brewing, and mm -hmm. I guess that's the most um, proactive we ask, to, like, that I would suggest mods be, is that if you think drama is a brewing, drama is a brewing, and there's nothing wrong with double checking. Yeah. There is not a single person who will be insulted by you coming to someone and saying, hey, this is what it looks like on the outside. Am I overreacting or is there something here? Yeah. And no I've, one's I've definitely seen that, that actually backfire before, though. Really? Um, we've had these these two particular players that were constantly just little chatty Cathy's in, in the Discord. And then somebody, um, an older player, came back to the server. And it kind of became this weird thing that my mods noticed where when the older player was speaking, those two little chatty Cathy's would just be silent. Oh. So, like, that to us suggested a problem because, like, these girls are, are constantly speaking. They're, they're very sociable. So I approached one of them and I was just asking, like, did something happen? Is there a reason why you don't talk as often when this person is around? And she, you know, insisted that everything was fine. But then I found out later that she approached the older player and she was like, by the way, Nikki's saying that you've been bullying us, and she's saying that you're the reason we don't talk anymore. So then that older oh. player thought that I was running my mouth, and I'm like, no, I'm just trying to make sure everyone's okay. Oh my god. What well, the then hell? I mean, what happened is that the, someone's intentions were revealed, and then you were like, alright, now I know to look out for you because you're spreading misinformation and lies. Yep. Precisely. So you can get the fuck out, or... <laughs> I mean, I can tell you what I would do in that situation. <laughs> oh, thank you for the wow, Kragis. Um, I would, I, this is what I would do in that situation. I would definitely correct that player and say, like, that is not what I said. I have the DMs if you would like to see um, screenshots of them so that you can see exactly what I said in the full context. Like, I'm not shy right. about that. I don't keep secrets. If you're going to go spread lies about me or misrepresent what I said, I'll just share exactly what I said, you know? But I did clear <laughs> the air with the older player, and then I, like, later on approached the, like, one of the chatty Cathy's. Mm -hmm. and, like, why why would you do this like, why, why'd you tell him that that's not what i asked you <laughs> what motive yeah. could you possibly have here um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so <laughs> making sure that drama drama is going to happen especially especially if you're running a younger role play mm -hmm. um where it attracts younger players that's just something that is naturally going to happen because people are still developing communication and interpersonal skills and hormones um, <laughs> huh? And what? And hormones, and hormones, yeah. And hormones. Yeah, I wasn't even referring to, like, puberty age. I was, like, oh. referring to young 20s because, you know, 21-year-olds are assholes. It's fine. Sometimes. I was 21 once. <laughs> um, <laughs> but sometimes, yes, I should preface that. Yeah, we've oh, had we've yeah. had good and bad experiences with younger 20-somethings, oh. but definitely we've had some that are, like, uh, still a little bit in their high school mode of thinking, you know. I was both at 21. It was great. <laughs> um <laughs> So no, yeah. So kill, so kill drama. Look out for drama. Kill drama. But I am, I am telling you that drama is the like black mark on your palm when like the pirate's tail or whatever. That if you get a black mark on your palm, you're dead. Your RP will be dead if drama keeps happening and it is not and it does not go unchecked. Yep. But don't just like kill drama. Like approach it like the zombie apocalypse where you double tap. Always. Yes. No. 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 Very over caution, over cautious is always good when it comes to drama. Yep, and um, get receipts and get receipts. Like if somebody comes to you yes. and has like this horrible accusation against another player, ask for screenshots. Like, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna like be really extreme for a second, so I apologize. Um, if you're sensitive, just mute the stream for just a second. This is something that goes on in the roleplay community, and it's awful, but it happens. So I'm just gonna say it. 
Um, people that really, really want to to mark another person as, as toxic and awful and want them out, this is what they'll do. They'll go to the mod and they'll say, so-and-so is a pedophile. Yes, they will do this. I have experienced this, okay? If someone comes to you with an extreme, like, WTF, oh my god, accusation like that, get receipts. Nine times out of ten, it is a lie. It was a misunderstanding, you know? Maybe the screenshot will be like them saying, my favorite book is Lolita. And it's like, that does not prove anything. Oh my god, you know? And then you've removed somebody for, like, a, just a false accusation. So get receipts. You know, if somebody comes to you with some drama that sounds, like, really extreme, get receipts. And and please note that if you are the mod and you are and you're being asked to deal with it because someone is a, like accusing another person of being a pedophile or X Y and Z, um, you are entitled to those receipts. Yes. So if anyone at any point in time says, "Well, I'm not comfortable sharing my my personal conversations," then you sit there and go, "You have no. I'm investigating something. If you're not willing to show me the proof, then go away." Yeah, <laughs> because that's serious. That's like, those are serious accusations. Like I, and I would, I, you don't want to kick somebody out over something that's not true. And that's what happens a lot of times because people see these types of things. They're like, they get really knee jerk reaction because you know, that's awful. You wouldn't want somebody like that in your role play, of course. Um, and so then they just ban them and it's just, then it turns out to just be not true. <laughs> yep. like, Lunar the bigger oh. accusations of like, drama and instigation that we've had over the last year have all completely ended up being like the moment that we press and say do you have screenshots they're immediately like well you know maybe it was just all in my head which <laughs> you know that's usually the sign that they like wanted someone to validate their experience and talk shit with them basically and then the moment that you're not giving them that and you're actually putting them on the spot to prove that that's what happened suddenly they're like ah you know, sometimes I have anxiety and it's like it. Yep. Lunar asked a great oh. oh, go ahead, Landon. I was gonna say Lunar asked a great question. Uh what do you do when your partner or player loves drama? Like won't stop with the out of character drama, it's like they, they just love it. Or is My it answer, out of character or is it in character? Oh, out of, it sounds like it's out of character because that's what we're talking about. Okay. Um, and my short answer is uh, they are no longer my partner or yeah. player. Yeah. Like, just, just, <laughs> I know. <laughs> if all they want to do is pick character. fights and start, yeah, no, mm -mm, agree. But yeah, I think that that's, a, that's the way to deal with it is n nope, no tolerance. Yeah. So you have to factor in that like role players we do it because of the escapism we're escaping from the IRL drama that we don't want to deal with mm -hmm. and coming to our happy little place online mm -hmm. so why would I want to come home to more of that shit yep you plot wouldn't. twist no <laughs> not plot twist <laughs> spoiler alert yeah yep. yeah I 100% agree if that if somebody makes it clear that like they can't stop causing out of character drama or they enjoy it on some level or you know whatever it is like I don't really care I don't really care why they're doing it to be honest like I just care about the behavior not the reason behind it um then uh then yeah we're, we're no longer role playing <laughs> that's what's my gonna happen question, my <laughs> question is, is that take the context and what they're doing and the behavior that they're doing and apply to a real life situation if you had someone in a friend group who gets off on turning two people against each other, two friends against each other in your friend group, why are you friends with that person? Good question. So for my personal um, advice on that would be to put in some sort of a corrective plan of action, you know, to put them like on a three strike plan, tell them like, this is the behavior. Oh, you might not yep. understand that it's bad, so I'm telling you why it is, why it's damaging, why it's making other people feel uncomfortable or unsafe, and why it needs to stop. I'm outlining the examples so that you know when you've done it before. And then, oof. Um, is this as a mod or is this as like a friend? No, this is both. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm no. very much like, I keep that steady professional. You're very restorative justice, which is awesome, <laughs> but I <laughs> Yeah, I'm much more patient as a mod than I am as a friend. Like I don't I just yeah. like, don't got time. <laughs> I'm like as a mod, absolutely three strike rule, but sitting there and being like, no, this this thing happened, this is, these are the strikes if it happens again. Like even I wouldn't even do three strike rules as a mod because I think three times letting that behavior go three times is gonna kill your RP. 
So this um, has been my experience with a three strike rule. We have a three strike rule in our RPs and we have never ever used it. One strike is enough. One strike is always yeah. enough. They just leave. Like when I tell them like, I, 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 we can't condone this. This is why. And we talk about it and I'm like, I'm going to issue you a strike. They disappear like every well, single time. Usually by the first strike that they're gone anyway. Yeah. Yeah, they just don't stay. I've never had to issue a third strike and actually kick someone out for anything other than activity. Activity is the only time I've ever actually had, like, three strikes you're out. Yeah. Actually, there was one person that actually managed to get to 12 strikes before Holy we finally crap. Had... How? Too many strikes. Persistence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alright, so... Okay. Go ahead. Uh, it no, it go ahead. was that she, um, she was the kind of person that kind of kept... You know, she always had like a valid, a very valid excuse for her behavior, despite the behavior being very toxic and making a lot of people just feel unwelcome around her. It was just like, she always had this like very woe is me. And we wanted to, you know, like she put herself in that victim mentality. And so we wanted to play basically Captain save -a And so, yeah, but finally by the 12th strike, we were just like, okay, you're done. At this point, you've made every single person in the story uncomfortable not a single person wants to write with you goodbye yeah oh that sucks i can't believe it got to 12 strikes though like that is persistence yeah. <laughs> all right um very i want i do want to continue on because i want to be that we have about 20 25 minutes left and an entire other section to get to so oh, yeah um very quickly i think we've kind of covered it but i think it could be just said know your niche know your people know your demographic um mm -hmm that'll help if you are doing if you are expecting you know constant activity like daily con activity and stuff like that uh your your age demographic is not going to be people in their 30s yeah it's not going to be people who have jobs and families and a life it's going to be people who have no hobbies after school it's going to yeah. be younger younger people which is not a bad thing but you need to know your demographic if you're going to continue to expand your longevity of your RP. And yep. also knowing your demographic helps know where to advertise. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And yep. know when it's time to advertise too. Um, the last thing you want to do is have a RP that's been boiled down to five people and desperately need new people to come in. Mm -hmm. um, that's already too late. It but is. you also don't want to, if you have a small, if you do small group RP where your max is 20, you don't want to start advertising at 19 people. Um, mm -hmm. Because you're going to get more, you might get more than one person coming in. Yep. 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 So you got to, you got to know, and we've, we have an episode of, of this uh, particular show where we talked about advertising and things like that, where we go a little bit more into it. Um, but, but knowing your niche definitely affects the longevity as well. If you don't have a very good idea of who you're looking for and why you want that particular type of person, then um, you're going to struggle to keep your role plays open because you're going to be constantly hunting for, for people that don't exist, right? Because everything yeah. that you build in your role play and everything that you do has to be made specifically for the particular type of role player that you want, right? Because there's so many different ways to role play and so many different kinds of role players out there that, um, that you're not going to get all of them. So you got to know what your niche is and go for that. Exactly. Yep. And it kind of, I like how it ties in a little bit to your video on So I've Been Banned, What Do I Do Next? Where you talk about how uh, role plays are not um, public access, they are private clubs. Yep. Um, and it's kind of, that ties into knowing your niche. Like, you have to acknowledge that you are not going to apply to everybody, or you're not going to, sorry, appeal to everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's all right. Yep, that's totally fine. You don't have to, and you shouldn't. You know, it's, it's, it's basically, it's basic advertising, right? Like there are very, very few things in the world that actually appeal to everybody. The only thing I can really think of is like, you know, Disney movies, right? They basically appeal to everybody, but even there's these Disney even had movies have haters, you know? So it's not like everyone, everyone it, but like, those are like the only things I can think of that really have universal appeal almost everything that is marketed to you, including role plays, does not have universal appeal. Yeah. <laughs> That's Food. true. <laughs> <laughs> Food is definitely Food. not universal. Everybody everywhere uh, eats different foods, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you told one person that like, to eat a snake then people some people would be like oh that's disgusting and for me i'm like rattlesnake is delicious what are you talking about what are you talking about 
Is it? Oh I don't know. God. I don't think I've ever actually had snake. It's delicious. I'm so close to this uh, new- spell region, by the way. Oh, <laughs> just, I just know that it's going to come. It's going to come here in a few minutes, and I'm just going to be so excited. Okay. But then there's, like, those people that, um, what is it? They subsist on sunlight. What oh, like people? Breatharians? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not true, though. That's not true. That's a scam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't like food. <laughs> they do well, like food. They're like... lying to you. <laughs> Here we go. There's another one. Sunlight. Everyone's like, you need sunlight to survive. There are some people who are allergic to the sun. It, not everything is universal. Oh, that's true. There are actually people with sunlight allergies that get sunburned so easily that they have to, like, you know, be they super, literally super careful. Can't go yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, shall we move into the next topic? Do you yes. guys have any last things to say about in character stuff? Because I, I, or out of character stuff. No, no. that I got that. Alrighty, then our next one is uh, it kind of has to do with out of character community, but it's about accessibility. Uh, and the way that I'm putting this is that sometimes in an RP, it is extremely hard to join when the story has already started. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you need, if, if you are interested in getting players after the story has gotten to a certain point, you need to make an understanding of what has been happening and where the story is now accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to let players know what is going on because they have missed a month, six months, mm-hmm. a year, three years of story background. How do you catch them up quickly? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nikki, you've been running yours for a long time, so I would love to hear your perspective on this. So honestly, like we are actually coming to this conundrum and we're, we're working on uh, how to fix it. And one of the ways that we've done that is we've created a, a giant graphic showing the in-character timeline over the last 10 years of like relevancy. And that has helped a lot. Um, another thing that another mod of mine has suggested that I really don't want to do which is instead of allowing in um, original characters, we just we only let people adopt from our NPC checkout. Um, I, I don't really want to do that because as much as these are needed concepts, I, I don't personally like the idea of you know clipping someone's creative wings quite to that degree. Um, oh, it's a lovely timeline. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is definitely something to factor in and that, like, of course, after three years, there has been so much that has happened and we're coming to a place in our, our current storyline where it's about to be the, the next installment of the saga, which is going to change the entire face. And in some ways, it could be a really, really great time to, like, get in because it's basically like starting a new storyline. Um, but in other ways, it, it can also be... Um, you know, r- rather difficult because it, it has been so very long and so very much has happened. It can be very intimidating. And fortunately, I think the the biggest thing that we can do that is a benefit to us is the fact that we have someone called the starter mod and it's his job to really work hands on closely with every single new player and just kind of like just hold their hand, walk them through the initial stuff. And, and that's a big benefit, but it, there's definitely always room for improvement there. It's it's just one of those issues that you're just going to have to really face every single day. And yeah. Yeah, I think once a, once a role play gets to a certain point, like then everyone kind of ends up dealing with this. So um, I, I can say from we've we've really tried to have situations where the role play can keep going like we would add to the lore to make it so that things were explained a little bit better and stuff like that. But um, we never had like a starter mod or anything. So maybe that would be helpful. But what we actually do is uh, we say, fuck it, we're not gonna deal with that. And we just start over (laughs) all the time. (laughs) So like every like year to two years, we just make a new role play with a new setting and uh, and kind of go from there, which 100% works. Um, But I know there are definitely people that feel like nostalgic uh, for previous settings and they miss those role plays and they want to go back to them and things like that. And Nope, sorry, we're not going back. Um, <laughs> but that's that been a way that we found that works for sure to, uh, do keep, to do that. We do keep expanding on the lore and on new locations and new character classes that are mm-hmm. available. Because at first, obviously, it was just like the very small, it was only students, only in the on the campus. 
and now it's like you can also have a rebel and they have these channels over here and then there's also agents and like because we're getting to like the war part of things it's going to open up the world outside of just the campus and then that's going to um pull back on a lot of the previously existing restrictions we've been teasing on that for like almost a year at this point mm -hmm. uh so it, it, yeah it is a pickle but it's not something that cannot be a uh, path post the word yeah and to me, it's more important, I think, to keep the players together than to keep one specific roleplay going. Like, to me, the value is, you know, in, in Naomi and Landon and Jane and Bree and, like, let's see who else is in the chat that I can see that's in our roleplays. Um, I don't see anyone else right now, but if you're listening, you know what I mean. Like, to me, that's where the value is. It's in it's in the writers that we, that we have and that we've cultivated, not in a specific setting. So that's I why I think, like, we have taken kind of that hacked um as far as you know how to keep the role play going like well the way is to make a new role play <laughs> uh, i do really envy that like because when i first made this switch from aol to eloquy and then to discord i, I had lost all of my old aol friends oh. so i didn't have that network i just kind of made rookshaven because oops, sorry hmm? imaginary server um, oh you can say the name <laughs> if you want to if you don't want to that's fine though I don't want to be like shamelessly plugging it. So. Oh no, you can, you can. It's fine. <laughs> when I made that server, I um, it was mostly because I dealt with so much click play, and I really didn't want that. So I wanted to have like a space that was just like a clean break where everyone comes in and they don't really know each other, and they can just build together based on that. So like the idea to me of you know scrapping it and starting something over is just so foreign because all I have had for the last three years has been my server and I, I just I, I can't I, I've tried other places I've tried zombie apocalypses and Game of Thrones uh, Kendra knows how much I've tried Game of Thrones and it just <laughs> didn't work <Yeah. laughs> I mean, it was really hard the first time that we did it. Um, Landon, I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit, because I know that was something that you felt very strongly whenever we decided, okay, no more Lover Only Hope. That was the first role play that we were in that we all met. Um, and we're going to we're gonna make a new one, and we're going to delete Lover Only Hope. And I know that was very that was, uh, that was yeah. a big struggle for us, and I know it in particular hit you pretty hard. Well, I think that um, what was very unique about that is that we didn't make another one. Yeah. We went into indie, and I wasn't in indie. Yeah. Um, so all of a sudden for me, it was like, oh, this community that I've literally spent the last two, two and a half years building is moving on to something else that I don't, I don't get anything out of it. I don't like one-on-one -on -one role playing because I like world building. Mm -hmm. I like for like, just, it wasn't fit for me. Yeah. Um, and so that was really, really difficult and really hard. And we, we did, we transitioned. I adapted. I started in indie. You tried, um, really <laughs> tried really hard. Really hard. I think we all did right. in those little indie groups that we were running. <laughs> yeah, there were there were many indie groups that that kept it alive, but it just it didn't have the same community for no. me. It didn't have the same connections for me. I was feeling very lost, and I stopped RPing. Um, mm -hmm. And and Karen and I fell out of touch for a little while, um, and and that stopped happening. And then something magical happened that. Karen started going back into writing group RPs and, and I wasn't a part of it at that point. You had like Pokemon and yeah. a few others. Um, but then we reconnected and you reached out. And since then it's been a lot easier because a, you came back cause I'm awesome. <laughs> and also, <laughs> and well, also, luckily I still had your Facebook so I could find you that's again. True. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, no. Yeah. And, and yeah. also the community that I, that I had felt was leaving me behind a was still there. When I came back, Naomi, Shadow, um, Karen, everyone was still there and was still willing to gather, was still really excited to write together. And we started over doing, doing group RPs mm -hmm. and the endings didn't seem so scary because things did restart. We found our niche, niche. we found our rhythm, we found the fact that we don't really like indie as much. No, uh, we didn't. We tried. It didn't general. work. <laughs> Um, and that we could continue to do this and then just start over and continue to grow this community because now it's not just the three or four of us. Kendra joined, Marina joined, Thumper is, has joined, there is, is Jane has joined. There is a huge amount of people that every single RP, Bree and Summer, 
were kind of like, okay, now you're a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that community just continues to grow more and more. And that has been really nice. Um, but it is that it is that first hard transition that is really that was really difficult. But um, I, that kind of got away from me. But anyway. <laughs> no, no, you're good. It, so I think the point is, is like it's scary at first because in yeah. role plays we're not we're not um, we're not used to endings, right? Like a book ends, you know, um, a, a a a fanfic ends, you know, or you just stop posting about it. I guess whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but like role plays, role plays don't end like the way a role play ends most of the time is the other person stops coming online you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah ghosting right like that's typically how a role play ends and so i think the first time that a role player experiences an actual like story ending it's a bit jarring and um, yeah. a bit difficult for them but um but that's how we found the most success is actually saying no this is the end and we're starting a new book now and that has helped us so much with coming to a place where we can keep our community together without us getting bored or without us getting like you know uncomfortable with uh with what's going on in the role play my mentality is kind of like a mix of what you're saying with the uh you know a book ends because yes a book does end but sometimes a saga continues and that's kind of what I'm aiming for with my particular story. Is that is that a roast? It's a rib. So Levi's making ribs today, oh. and apparently they're done. I thought that we thought they weren't going to be done until two, but apparently they're done. And he, he brought me one. So um, oh. oh, thank you. So yeah, um, we'll we'll see. We'll see if I can eat a little bit of rib and talk at the same time. But uh, but yeah, he <laughs> wanted to make sure I had them had one fresh. I wasn't see, waiting another thirty minutes. <laughs> the way that I kept the the story going i guess is that it's sort of these episodic you know uh, stories within the same universe and it just kind of one bleeds into the other but we do have very clear like the you know the first war or the first bit is like the lead up to a war between these two factions and then the next story is going to be um a lead up to another war between two other factions and then it keeps going until you just have this like ruined mage community where everyone's just kind of in this apocalyptic blah and that's the idea but it does change depending on the characters that we have who is the most active what they're playing towards and where we see the people are wanting it's just that right now this is the progression yeah and role play you know emergent storytelling is important in role tape role play so you can have all the plans in the world and sometimes then you have to change your plans because of what ends up actually getting role played you know mm -hmm. that's the best part um, yeah, and, it, and if that works for you, that works for you. We're not, we're not coming on here sitting there and saying, like, the way that we do it is the only way. There are people who, like, it sounds like you, Nikki, that have ran the same story for 10 years. That's amazing. Well, uh, I didn't know <laughs> how long. Okay, three years. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and no, then there's, there's like, days... Go uh, ahead. There's, um, there's a friend of mine, her name is uh, Jamie, and she has run a server called The Broken, which on Discord has been active for eight years, and Holy crap. it was it was active on AOL I think from 2013 is when it started. No, okay. 2010. Um, yeah, so like it's it's definitely possible to keep things going. It you know it just takes a lot of mm -hmm. work and a, yeah. a huge time commitment. And there are people that that works for people to continue it on and wanting to make a saga and. We've we've joked about doing something similar of that. Is that as far as like our RPs all exist in the same universe? Yeah, <laughs> we have a pretend um, timeline where it's like where which which settings are are, are where and uh, our characters are reborn a, each time. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a Pixar theory, but with Karen's RPs. Um, but yeah, I think that that is that is definitely part of it. Um, I want to veer back on track just because I want to be wary of time. Mm -hmm. Um, that we talked about having accessibility and it sounds like that there are difficult ways and, and, and good ways, but also diff ways of that we haven't quite figured out on how to make things accessible. But I also want to talk about slumps um, and the, the, the ebbs and flows of RPs and that it's very natural to have a down month and to have an up month <laughs> mm -hmm. and talk about our experiences with that. Yes, slumps 100% happen. 
um like you know especially if you have a lot of people that are like school age in your role play then they're gonna have times where they cannot post because it's you know it's exam season or whatever and um and there are definitely ways to get to get through that and i think nikki you had a, you had some good comments on this um so go for it <laughs> okay um so yeah there's a summer slump and, and everything but um one thing that i found really interesting is that you can actually track i mean without the pandemic in mind obviously the pandemic has kind of messed with a lot of people's schedules um but before that you had like there were almost four different times of the year where you would get you know the dips and the peaks and things like that and it was actually really really fun tracking that before the fucking pandemic um <laughs> and that turned everything on its head <laughs> pretty much yeah um but the summer slump is obviously like the biggest one you'd think that because we all have you know excessive time off um that means that we're all going to be um able to write more but what i found i think is that it without that rigid schedule it kind of lends itself to a, an air of lethargy otherwise you're outside at the beach you'd rather be experiencing life either way you're on two different sides of the spectrum neither of them land you in the middle where you're at home at your desk writing so when you launch a server in the middle of the summer slump you really have to be prepared for a few months of nothing and that's okay it's just that's the summer slump it has nothing to do or almost nothing to do with the content of your story it's just the timing but if you launch in the post-holiday pop or the springtime bits or the autumn areas i personally love things that launch in autumn because i feel like the players that you get tend to have the most longevity that I've seen. Um, but it's kind of like a, a bit like a horoscope, actually. Before I nerd out over that, um, I, I just think it, it is important to be very mindful of these things and to not take them to heart, not internalize them, and, and not feel like the time of the year where you launch or the time of the year where you are particularly slow, it, it doesn't necessarily indicate that you are failing or that your server is failing. It's it's just the timing and you have to factor that in. Yeah, absolutely. I think a slow a slow period um, doesn't necessarily mean that the server is dying, but you should be taking action during those periods to make sure people understand that like, you know, when we pick back up, things are gonna resume. And it's not like mm -hmm. the server is, is dying, it's just we're being slow at the moment. Um, yeah. And definitely like, that's how I know when it's time to make a new setting is, oh, the server's being really, has been really slow. For, for a while, okay, people must be bored. New setting time, you know? <laughs> so however it is that you handle that, you know, maybe that's when it's time to drop an event. Maybe that's um, a trigger for you to be advertising and getting new players in. Like these are all things that can make server activity pick up. So whatever it is that you do, that you, that you know picks up server activity in your server, that's what you need to do at that time, you know? I personally like to spam scenes. <laughs> And if there's no one to write with, I have two other characters, and I will write with myself. <laughs> I mean, if you have to, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, um, like, just being wary, you learn these things. You learn when it's going to be slow with time and being a mod and everything like this. Like, none of this is inherent. Because, mm -hmm. like you were saying, Nikki, you would think because you have so much free time, that summer would be fast. It's not always. Nope. Mm -hmm. um, it might be uh, halfway through summer because everyone is bored. It's the hottest part of the season. Everyone wants to be inside. Um, all of those kinds of things. I have seen that, that in the uh, in August, it picks up. Mm -hmm. um, but it also is like, oh, it's really slow in June when everyone just wants to be outside or school is out of session. Um, yep. sleeping for whatever the reason, the week after the week after the new year kind of like everybody else uh like getting going to the gym and stuff like that people's activity is great yeah <laughs> the week after the new year, not the week between christmas and new year because that's dead but the week after fantastic but come february dead everything yeah, dead. <laughs> yeah. it's so true um, the best thing to monopolize on is like january 6th 6th ish to about january 15th if you can just spam advertisements in all across whatever platforms you use i would highly recommend it because the post holiday pop is going to see your activity last through the springtime dips 
Yeah. And that's and only like, going to attract players. February is hard as far as um as far as seasonal depression goes because you you're after the holidays it's really the uckiest kinds of weather like we always think about like winter weather being fun and beautiful for all of December and January but then you get to February and you're like I'm actually over this shit yeah um, so February so always dips People that was something that we was depressed. That okay. was something that we meant that I mentioned earlier in our our little group chat about the February funk which you know working title we can decide what we want to name it later but, um, <laughs> no but it's really a thing yeah it's I, i've noticed a lot of people on bad role player stories on reddit or just throughout different servers talking about how in a funk they're feeling and oh i'm so sorry that i haven't been posting as regularly and it's like you really have to factor in like don't take it out on yourself stop looking down at yourself and thinking i'm not being enough when this is something that everybody is going through right now it's just it it's a thing and we mm -hmm. don't understand it maybe it is the seasonal depression it could just be life things but for whatever reason call it mercury's and re retrograde february sucks and we're all feeling this so don't be sad yeah i definitely i definitely agree with that and there's some there is something about february it being like right after the holidays when a lot of people are forced to see their family plus the winter weather like plus like there's just something there is something about it for sure no february is the tuesday of uh the month it is it is this it's the it's the month version of tuesday absolutely as nikki tuesdays i take offense to that what well, tuesdays are the, i appreciate you and you respect your opinion tuesdays are the worst day of the week i this will not be argued it just is it's true though like if you work in an office you know tuesday's always full of meetings and half of them are pointless and you're not feeling rejuvenated from the weekend, so you have, but you have the whole week ahead of you. It's just terrible. Tuesdays are terrible. I always um, have Tuesdays off, so I don't Oh, care. well, I'm glad that you get Tuesdays off. But if you look Jealous. at it, if you, if you work a five day in a row, like, I feel like, uh, this is so off topic and we need to get back on track, but it's fine. I feel like that um, weeks are kind of like gender where they're a construct and they're not, act or days of the week are a construct, not actual things. Oh yeah, society so makes your them. Tuesday might be a friday because you start work on wednesday or you start work on thursday or whatever um so it really is your tuesday is a friday and that is the worst day of the week that's just how that's just how it is <laughs> that's so true though the second it's basically the second day of the work week the second day of the work week is yeah. garbage no it's the worst yeah um all right so the last thing that we kind of wanted to touch on was setting realistic goals yeah um like we know our peak groups aren't gonna last forever RPs and stories aren't going to last forever. Groups themselves might not last forever. Um, there are too many people having to stay on track with one story. The story will eventually feel boring um, or people will eventually fall out and you'll find yourself that if you're in the same story, you'll have an entirely different group of people. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to determine with yourself when you begin RPing and when you begin this process, what is a successful story for you? Mm -hmm. yeah. So for some people, it could be 10 years. For some people, it could be three. For some people like us, we I know, Karen, your philosophy is if the RP lasts a year, it's a good story. It's successful. Yep. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you determine that? When should you determine that? All of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think, I think it's important. Like, and you're going to get different answers for different people. You know, Absolutely. you guys, you just got to think about you and what your goals are. And, um, and that's what your answer should be. Like, that's what should dictate it. So it's, but if you don't have a metric for what is success, it's just so easy to feel like you've not been successful because endings can feel so jarring and so upsetting um, if you're not used to having those happen, um, then any ending can feel like a failure. And that's just not the case. So I think it's just important to decide beforehand, like what is success? What does success look like? so that you know when you've had it. Because otherwise I feel like you don't know and we're way more likely to think like, I'm a failure. And it's like, okay, but are you really? What would it look like if you were successful? If you don't even know that, then you weren't a failure, you know? Yeah. I feel like for me, just the fact that I've lasted for the three years, like when originally when I first launched this server, I didn't honestly think that I was going to survive that first summer. I didn't think I was gonna last longer than a month and it's been this long like that to me is pretty successful and you know i've told my staff that if it does come to a point where we we have to scrap it because it's just it's not going anywhere 
I've made peace with that. I don't love it because obviously this is a huge part of my life at this point. But, you know, it, it's... I guess my thing was I really wanted to write the story of this one character and I needed a world where I could do that. Mm -hmm. And I've made that. And I've been fortunate enough to make enough... Uh, to meet enough amazing writers that I feel comfortable in knowing that if we had to stop recruiting and we just had our core group, or even if we all just left, like I would still have what I needed in a, a contextual sense where I could still finish my character's story on my own. Um, and that to me is, is success, as long as I get this story out in some way. Um, but I also, I've known other people who see success as, you know, a hundred players or a thousand players. And if that's their success, then, you know, there's, you can buy that for $5 on Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, I think to circle, to circle back to that, one thing I definitely don't think you should make your success metric is your number of players. I think you should have a goal of about how many players your, your role play can handle and what's appropriate for your role play. But I don't think you should measure success that way because then the individual people kind of turn into this like commodity sort of. And uh, there's all kinds of problems that come into commodifying your player base that uh, that just make your RP into a disaster. So other than that, anything else I think can be a good success metric. <laughs> I actually want to I actually want to say that um, for everything, the amount of people or you shouldn't rely your version of success and what success is on other people. Yeah. That shouldn't be the numbers of other people, the numbers of likes, the number, like in general, I'm not even talking RP at this point. Um, so success should be something that's determined with you. Mm -hmm. Did you tell the story you want to tell? Did you build a community that you wanted to build? Like even that doesn't have to do with people because it's how you ran and built the community. Um, like, did you, did you do these successful things? It should be ter determined on your actions, not the actions of others. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The success should be something that you can achieve. Um, and in role play, like other people are a part of it, but they shouldn't be like the one determining factor because you never want your players to turn into numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think especially cause that, that kind of detracts from the, the whole OSC connection that we talked about earlier. Like, how are you possibly going to be friends with or to have a genuine connection with a thousand people in one place like how can you possibly keep track of that many people and, and yeah. keep it genuine you can't you can't what is it like something like um there's been studies right in regards to like social media the numbers of friends you have on social media versus the numbers of friends that, that you would have before social media existed and i think there's something like on average a person can have like 500 genuine connections with other humans and no more than that like that's like I'm the like, average that's so much like that's <laughs> but if you think about it it's not that's not just friends that's like friends family members co-workers acquaintances gotcha. within the community okay. you know like maybe you know your barista kind of well because you go to the same starbucks every time you know or whatever oh. right but you can yeah. have like 500 genuine real connections that you can remember and past that like your brain can't conceptualize that number of people anyway yeah right I mean, it'd be nice if I could, you know, touch the lives of that many people, of course, but I don't think I have the bandwidth for that. And I feel <laughs> like I would drive myself insane trying. And yeah. I don't think that my server was built for that many people. I don't think my server could take more than 50 people. Yeah, um, I agree. I mean, I don't think my servers could take more than like 30 people. Like, I just don't, it just isn't set up for that. Like, if we had that many... Like, I just don't think it would work. Like, As things would start. With Korea, having 37 currently. But we don't, um, but, but like, no, most of those people aren't in the RP, people. though. No, absolutely. I was just being, I was just being a lot. Oh. But, um, yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, success shouldn't be numbers. People shouldn't be numbers. That's yeah. That's all. Yeah. All right. Last thoughts. We got to wrap it up. Okay. Um, I don't, I think I got through everything that I wanted to. So I'm, I'm good with my thoughts. I would like to take the opportunity to just in tell you that um, make sure you're passionate about this RP. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's end of day. That is what's going to make it happen the longest. If you yeah. care about it, you can carry it. Absolutely. If you yep. can be passionate about really anything, you can keep it going. It's true. Like that's really, that's the one, that's the one thing. If you don't have that, then all the rest of this advice that we've given is kind of pointless, you know? Mm -hmm. Nope. 
So, Nikki, any last words? Uh, are you going to kill me? Um... <laughs> no, no, no. Go yeah. for it. Go for it. Uh, I would say in, in closing, you know, just whatever, if it looks like it's failure, it probably isn't. It's just you're going to get what you put into it. And sometimes that means that you're going to have to carry it on your back for a little while. And if you have that commitment, then you can absolutely make it work. If you don't, then that's fine too. It doesn't make you a failure. It just means that you don't have, like, you're not going to do this thing right now. But that doesn't mean that there's not another story that you can be a great part of. Yeah. Yeah. And any, and if you do have a failed RP, like I've had plenty of failed RPs and I kind of believe that like, until you've really gone through that, then like that's a formative experience in being a, a role play admin, you know, until you've had a, a role play kind of like fall apart on you and you, and you don't really know what that feels. Um, you haven't really had the full experience, I feel like. So, you know, um, everyone goes through it and, and that's fine. Yeah. All right. That's a good wrap up. Shall we uh, exit out and do this article of the day? Yes. Okay. Let me, I think hopefully it will let me save while they're fighting. <laughs> I need to put halos of hardness on these guys. Okay. Let's save. And get the I dropped it into go. the chat, but Miss Nikki found this article, even though it's one of my favorites. I, yeah, I um, love this. Today. So Nikki, you want to talk to us about it? Um, so it's the 36 questions that lead to love. This was a New York Times article from 2015 um and the psychology is basically you ask these 36 questions to like a stranger and it accelerates the intimacy between you guys um and i found that this it doesn't just work as um no stop with the pop-ups um it doesn't just work as a romantic intimacy it can also work with platonic intimacies it can be excellent for team building i use it with work for myself um my husband uses it for his own team and it's it's just really great for if you're a moderator yourself that you can use this in chat to start a conversation um but it's also a great writing prompt if you are just struggling to understand your own character you can ask these questions to your character and they're great for exploring that so that's it i um personally use them they are my second date tool uh, oh. If you made it past the first date, I guarantee you that a lot of these questions are asked on the second date. <gasps> I love either, that. Either, either my partner is aware that we're playing this game or they're not. But uh, <laughs> this, tip, this tends to be my uh, second date bonding because a lot of these questions, it's things like, what's your relationship with your mother? Um, what would con constitute a perfect day for you? Uh, do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? It really gives you insight into who a person is and how they think. Um, and none of them are like really like red flaggy trying to search out, but they are, they are revealing in some intimate ways. What's great about these questions is you can ask them and just have like a really quick, like, like, I think the first question is like, if you could date, uh, if you could go on dinner with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Um, and that could be something where you just say, like, oh, Michael Jackson, because he's Bay or something. But um, you can also take that one question and it can turn into an entire conversation. And that can just be the conversation prompt itself. Absolutely. So, yes, yeah, so you can be it can be either way. I love that about this question, right? Because it can be very like um, lighthearted, like, oh, I like his music. So that's why, you know, and it's very like a whatever. But um it can also be like a, you know, you could you could pick like a, a historical figure or a politician for this answer. And then I think it could get a lot deeper into um, yeah. kind of how you feel about certain things. Yeah, my um, my best friend answered this question and it was her mom because her mom passed away five years ago. Oh. Like that. The, I mean, it, but that it, it shows you that. Right. It shows you uh -huh. it shows you in depth to that and and your willingness to either be vulnerable or not with it, questions like that or answers like that. It just it gives it gives you a test of of who that person is um mm. and as an rp tool how that care those characters are i think that 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 these are great questions for that too yeah yeah i love that so yeah y'all um, go forth and, and use this um for, even, for icebreaker bonding or for character questions yeah and even more importantly than this um not more importantly but there is a, a fan fucking tastic um uh, podcast musical based off of these questions about two uh, husband and wife who have had a very very big falling out 
and their journey to either refall in love and decide to stay married or separate using these questions to uh, find themselves again. Aww. And uh, Jonathan Groff plays the main character, and I think it's Jesse Shelton plays the wife. So Jonathan Groff and Jesse Shelton it is musical, and it's free. It's called Thirty Six Questions. And is it is, since it's a podcast? Is it an audio drama or is it are there visuals too? No, it's an audio drama. So it's all it's all podcast. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love but that. It's, it's obviously professionally done and stuff like that. So it is it is music behind the singing and everything like that and and songs. And I think it's three episodes, three 30 minute episodes, maybe. Yeah. Mm. That's so they cool. They only needed 90 so. minutes to get through these questions. That's... What? They only needed 90 minutes to get through all these questions. Yeah. I mean, the characters have been, had been married before. So a lot of the time, like, who would you take as a dinner guest? Like they knew those kinds of stuff, but it's, it's a really, it's a really fun musical. Um, and it's, it's really great. So that's so would cool. recommend. Yay. I think that that is it for our show. Okay. All right. Well, let me switch over to the webcam only. Okay. All right. So we are at the ending. Um, Nikki, this is the first time you've been a guest on here, but anytime that we have guests, we want to give you the opportunity to, if there's something that you would like to plug or something that you, that you want to um, advertise or just, uh, just something like not related to the topic that you want to, you want people to, to see, this is, this is your chance. Go ahead. What, whatever you would like. Oh, thank you for the bits, Katie. Am I allowed to plug my server? That yes. Yes. Good. You can plug anything you want. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, Molly, best dog ever. Vote for her for president. And second, <laughs> uh, my server is Rookshaven, and you can Google us and find us. And literally all you have to do is Google Rookshaven to pull us up, which I'm kind of like. But anyways. Thank you for the howl and the bits, Lunar. Yeah, um, Nikki's got that SEO with Rookshaven. It is, it's like the first thing when you, when you Google it. I'll put it in the chat so you can see how it's spelled. There's a place called Rookshaven in real life, and we beat them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. All right. All right. So, um, Landon, what would you like to uh, plug for today? As always, you can find me on my Instagram, my Twitter, and my TikTok at Land in Maine, L-A-N-D-I-N. It's a pun. This is becoming my catchphrase. Uh, also, I got the the thing, the thing that I have been working several weeks for, um, saving up all of my little magical regents. So just expect that fun little thing to be happening. So I wanna I wanna say that so that everyone uses exclamation point landed next stream. <laughs> I'm I'm adding it right now. So we can do it right now while the, all, all, where all of y'all wonderful applauses are coming in. Um, so y'all can keep those going while I'm adding this command in here. Give me a second, and I will get it. <laughs> so you have a command now. You have a command, and then yeah. Lunar has a command too. So okay. Lunar, joining me on that on that Simp Central. I love it. There we go. Okay, see exclamation land in. Now anybody can type exclamation land in and it says that. <laughs> Thank you. It's my tagline. Yes. Um, I love it. So anyway, <laughs> yes, those are the three those are the three things that I would like to really promote this week. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> and where can they find you, Miss Karen Terry? Okay, so you can find me, of course, right here on Twitch. On Saturdays from about noon to two, we have Interstage Window, which is a conversation show. Landon is on almost every episode. And then sometimes we have a guest, like we have Nikki here today. Oh, wow, Brie, coming in. I'm coming in clutch with the whistle instead of the applause. Wow. <laughs> Um, and uh, then I also have my Thursday stream called Artistic License, and that is kind of my whatever I want to do stream. Mostly right now we're playing Final Fantasy X, so if you're interested in Final Fantasy X, come hang out on Thursdays. Also, by Thursday, the emotes should be approved, so we'll get to use those. And uh, don't yeah. forget, if there's emotes that you want to see still on the channel, let me know. I have two slots open. I can add two more, and if we get more subscribers, um, then I'll get more slots or more people, more bits also opens up more slots as well. So that's how you do that. Oh, thank you for the biddies, Landon. <laughs> Wolf emotes. Well, Lunar, I want to keep them still being cle clean. Um, Cause that's she what is they our are. Queen. Yeah, so I don't know about a wolf. I don't know about a wolf, but uh, but I'm thinking more like emotions or or things that you want the emotes to be doing. 
So let me know about that. <laughs> Time to perfect the Karen sandwich. <laughs> uh, I can see about that. I can see about getting an emote that's like queen eating the sandwich. <laughs> Um, an angry emote. Okay. Okay. I will definitely consider those. Thank you guys so much. Um, cause I gotta, I, I, I've got, I've got two more slots. So I definitely want to get those filled and then have some backups for as we open up more slots, you know, to be able to add some more in. Um, yeah. okay. And then the other place that you can find me is on YouTube. That is where my show spare room goes up, which is my scripted role play help show that goes up on Wednesdays at 2 PM. And then I'm going to pop my socials in the chat. So there's all my socials. The social medias that I use are basically Twitter and TikTok. They are mostly advertising for my Twitch and for my YouTube. However, uh, you can also find some other stuff there. Like on Twitter, I'll also post hot takes sometimes. And on TikTok, you will also find silly stuff sometimes. So if that, whatever you're more interested in, that's the socials you can follow me on. And then you can also join Landon and I's Discord server, which is a roleplay help Discord server. There you go. There's the link to that. Um, if you are either interested in improving your role play or you have a lot of role play advice that you'd like to share with others and you want to help people when they ask questions, you can join that uh, Discord server. It's a good time. We have fun. What about a hype emote? Yeah, sure. We could do a hype emote, Lunar. Yeah, these are great ideas. Um, I'm going to I'm going to think about all of them and see about like what we want to add next. I think these are awesome. Um, so yeah, that's all the places that you can find me. Uh, let's find who we're going to raid today. Let's see who I'm following this live right now. Mm. I want to see, I want to see who, I only, there's only one person that's live right now that I follow. Hey, yo, Trey, and he's playing the castled. I'm trying to see if anybody else in that Wolf's Den server that I'm in is live right now. It doesn't look like any of the main people yeah. are. Oh, go ahead, Landon. I was going to say, my my Twitch people, it seems like this Saturday afternoon, people are not twitching today. Yeah, I usually have like three or four people live right now, but I only see one, which is really interesting. But that's okay. We can raid into Hey Yo Trey. Um, I can go live real quick. What? <laughs> <laughs> But I can go live. I've just made a Twitch account. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Nikki, you have to, whenever you finally, like whenever you get that going, cause I know you've been like wanting to make a YouTube and a Twitch and things like that for quite some time now, whenever you get that going, you have to tell us so that uh, I can make sure to um, promote your channel and everything to everyone. No. All right. So we're going to, we're going to raid into Hey Yo Trey for the moment. So, um, so here we go. I'm going to send that off. Okay, good. That's right. All right. So you guys don't forget to, of course, make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye. Have fun watching Bye. Be Castled.